Welcome to ZNN. I'm your presenter, Zahiruddin Zakaria, and here is my top story for today, distance learning. It's a new method that's being implemented right now to continue the academic year in Malaysia during the MCO. So basically, people are using platforms such as Google Classroom, Open Learning, uh, Zoom, and whatnot to help uh, students continue the academic year and learn. Now we're going to figure out if it's efficient, if it is good for the community in terms of academia, and see how it affects the students at large. And we'll also ask lecturers to see their perspective on it. Let's get on to the video. Okay, before this, can we tell the like the way the lecturer grading us is different, right? But because of the COVID-19 thing, so need, they need to change it up a bit. So it does affect us and it creates new assignments as well mm. now. Okay, and then Jordan. Yo, Jordan. Okay, yeah. so I believe it affects our grades a lot because like since we had to end our classes physically and go online and go online because of RMO, it's like mm. we don't have enough chances to actually consult properly with the lecturers like usually after class we usually talk to the lecturers before we go to, to ask what we need right and right now with what is going on we have limited time to actually talk to our lecturers we have specific timing we have to wait for the lecturers to actually reply to us so that, that takes time and that actually affects our assignments no 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 i it's not enough because first, you know, this whole thing relies on like the, you know, online, you need to have like good internet connection and stuff. Like for me, I only get like good service like once in what, like every few hours, like I can't keep up and I, I'm left behind because of all of this, you know? So I don't know what to say, but like. Obviously not because, um, well, internet connection, they may say that internet connection provides you with everything, that you can look up anything online. But that's not true because, like I said, uh, we don't only practice theoretical uh, like subjects, but we also practice uh, practical subjects. So with that said, um, well, internet connection, yeah, it's like it's the only thing that keeps us connected, but then you can't really do anything in terms of gathering content for it. And plus with the equipments that we need, it's, I mean, they have to find a way to substitute that. For students to feel, um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like um, in this RMO uh, situation, people, students will get uh, very hyped up or maybe um, that's up the motivation level, up spirited up or whatnot, because I honestly feel demotivated even um, ever since this whole RMO started, because um, I feel like whatever decisions that um, we, we have, we don't really get to make decisions, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Like my interest level towards university, I think, has dropped because, like, we don't go to, like, physical university anymore. Like, we just stay at home, like, s staring at our screens every day. So, definitely, my interest level towards university is very low right now. For a long term, to replace it i don't think it's a good idea but like uh i know that sometimes people do masters online phd online and i've seen them doing them online i, I mean i think it's better the traditional way lah. like they can meet face to face and like see the expressions and everything yeah until you know, we can make sure all students have equal internet access and whatnot. Only then we can replace it. It's it's very hard, uh, especially, you know, with this thing. Uh, I kind of get like this is a sudden thing that's piled on top of us, this whole pandemic thing. So we have to go through quarantine and therefore implement this whole online learning uh, situation. It's an experiment for all of it, for all of us, but I don't think it's, uh, we're ready to accept that kind of um, substitute to 
traditional learning because uh, it's not the same. As far as men, I would say for guys, most most guys don't really have much of an emotional need that they will be fulfilled by the class itself. If anything, for guys, as far as emotional needs goes, it will probably be more fulfilled by being surrounded by people that they know, like their friends and whatnot, or like if you have a significant other and you know your significant other. So. For men, their emotional needs might be more fulfilled when surrounded by people that they know. So as far as the online classes go, they don't uh, their emotional needs probably it's like some might get fulfilled because some actually do care, while others do not. Like if I would look at my friends and think about their emotional needs, I would say about a majority of them don't really have any emotional needs being fulfilled. But some of them do, but majority don't. As for me, right, in terms of my emotional needs, yeah, I think not. It's bad for me because I'm the kind of person who likes to do do assignments and what together with my friends. Mm. So just being able to Skype like for limited hours, like what two to three hours, and then one person has to go cook, one person has to go go solar and all that. So we like that spirit of unity right there so it's not easy it's not easy mm. it's disappointing honestly um, my schedule no it's it's the other way around now because i used to uh, um i'm actually a, a person where even if i i sleep at 2 a.m like I sleep late, I, I will still wake up in the morning, early in the morning, like maybe um, 8 or 9 a.m. I, I, I really, I am usually awake around that time. But now, I can't sleep until it's 6 or 7 a.m. Like, yeah. So, um, only then, only after subo, I can, I can sleep and then I wake up at, in the afternoon, like at 1 or 2. So, it's not healthy, obviously. Yes. So during this daytime, I have to do my chores. So I need to interact with my family. So during the night time is the only time that I have for myself. Uh, it does affect my schedule and my focus sometimes because I sleep a lot. Uh, three to four out of ten. Honestly, it's affecting me so heavily, and that's why you get a three. Um, also, what I expect to get out of it is maybe just theoretical stuff. Um, yeah, that's in terms of studying. But then, uh, realistically speaking, what I will get out of this, I know, is that, um, you know, there's lack of understanding from both sides, from the university. Especially. I rate this whole experience a zero. <laughs> like, to, you know, voice my concerns out and like, they're not listening. And I feel like I'm just, you know, my concerns are swept aside and like their actions, which they deem, you know, appropriate is just to do like the bare minimum you know, give some words of consolation. They're like, I'm so sorry you're going through this, but hey, here's another five more assignments to top it off. So I feel like in my, um, you know, situation, that's what I'm going through right now. Like a solid six. I'm not sure about my expectations, but I hope everything would go smoothly. I mean, even if this RMO finishes, it's going to go back to normal, but a lot is gonna happen, you know, like because everybody had this and then now it's gonna happen like this. So everybody has to be prepared. Very interesting. While some students may be able to cope with the distance learning environment, some have been very critical and are not supportive of it at all. Let's see how the lecturers feel. Uh, for our faculty, for FCAM, we do have our online platform, which is open learning. Uh, other faculty, they have different uh, online platform for, you know, IBS, for FSTEM. They have, uh, they use Google Class Classroom. 
uh, even for uh, FAS, uh, I think they use both uh, open learning and also Google Classroom. It depends on the uh, faculty itself. Uh, but for us in FCAM, uh, we've been using online uh, open learning since uh, last year. Uh, we started out uh, uh, using this platform uh, since last year. Uh, so in a way, it would help us, uh, lecturers and the student itself, uh, you know. To, uh, and then I, I think our students have been gotten uh, the, the gist of it, how to use uh, open learning uh, uh, since yeah, last year. So I think IMW provide... Uh, quite a good uh, platform to students and also for the lecturers. <laughs> Definitely, okay. Uh, for me, like this is the future, like what you see how this um, COVID-19 has done for us, you know, like literally before this, you know, we just rely on traditional classes, traditional lessons. Now we have to resort to online because of the because of this whole situation where we can't gather at all so this will be the way to go for the rest of the year i'm well from what i'm seeing so should i have to buckle up like online will be the main priority thing and of course i think in the future you'll see more uh, online based learning from every university like right now if you see other other university in malaysia we, we're talking about malaysia right now right like some universities that, that that don't have their own online learning have to sh have to be shut down. Uh, so, so I always 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 uh try my best to, to I always try to give the best uh to my students. Uh, though sometimes it doesn't really. Uh, I know I I uh, a lot more can can be done, but. Yeah, I'm still learning, okay. Uh, for this process, I'm still learning. For online class, for online learning platform, I'm still learning. But I will try my best to improve on this uh, platform. Uh, you know, hopefully um, when we decide to use online later, uh, to use more online so we can get, uh, you know, um, okay with it. Out of 10, I would go for 6. Yeah, like, um, we're not doing that bad. We're quite okay. We're quite prepared for this. So, thank God, my students are not complaining. At first, that we do have student complaints a lot. You know, but now, it's just, you know, everyone is like, used to this. They they use they used to this environment, so they start to you know be okay with this, and they they start to comply a bit. There you have it, honest opinions from lecturers and students alike. While some may be able to cope with the situation, others have not and been very critical. So depending on the situation that you're in, the distance learning environment can either be something that is affecting you positively or negatively. Let's hear it in the comments below and tell me about how the distance learning environment is affecting you during this MCO. I've been Zahiruddin Zakaria and this is ZNN. Have a nice day.